Hello and welcome to Whiteland Restorations and our Talbot shell is in primer. That's everything in primer, shell and panels. Oh yes. We're winning. We are on the back foot. No, front foot. Front foot. Back foot's the worst bit. Ah, oh, we're on yeah. the front foot. <laughs> um, anyway, so it's looking good. Um, had a couple of runs in the old primer roos, but never mind. We're going to show you how to take them out and we're going to start here on the bonnet. Um, this is a really shallow, quite annoying one that just just came off of this edge and it's very even. It's all like that. It's barely noticeable, very easy. Um, Super easy to deal with. To, it's very easy to miss it is what I'm trying to say. Oh, right. So I've got one of our um, Wild and Restorations bulletproof blocks. There's a little tiny one here. It's very nice. You can use it either way around. That, it's either, this is a prototype one. You can either use it that way around, nice and flat, or if you put it upside down in there, the Velcro actually stretches all the way around to grab hold of the Velcro the hook and loop. That, that way, way around, you totally have a... fumbling it. Yeah. And then that way you get a little radius on this side, a nice accurate radius to work with. Very handy. And you probably saw me doing that on the um, ASMR video when I was doing the bonnet. Very gently oh, doing those radiuses. Yeah. So basically the same thing here. Um, if I, you can see it. See it there. That's the thing. What you want to try? You can yeah, see the yes. end of the sand there. That's where the run is. All along there. And you want to try and do this section without digging in here. It would be very easy just to put the block on there and run forwards and backwards and have a great big tram line in the bottom mm. there. So you either hold the block at a slightly squiffy angle like that, or you just tip the edge of the block up like just so. Or you could run it in and out like this, but that's not really going to take the run out that well. So I'm going to run it at a slight angle. You can see that run in there. The good thing about the black primer is it sounds light. It does, you don't need a guide coat for black primer. Mm. Super handy. See that one is in there, see? Now I'm putting pressure down with my finger here, but not anywhere else on the block, so it's not doing any work the rest of the block, you know? Small, small bits at a time. Yeah. And we'll do a little bit of lifting on this edge here. Different, all sorts of different techniques. Use them all. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Just working that one out. Slowly but surely. Again, gone. slowly, slowly catching monkeys. Exactly. Damn those monkeys. <laughs> Everybody gets runs, don't they? Yeah, especially, especially me. <laughs> the secret is just little bits at a time, smooth it out. It's not about making mistakes, it's about what you're willing to do to put those mistakes correct. Mm. And I make lots of mistakes. Who doesn't? Do you ever that time you ate a whole bag of cheesy poops in the middle of the night? That was a mistake. You mean wasn't it? we? <laughs> oh, you paid for that. We both paid for that. We both paid for that. And that was the end of the midnight snacks. <laughs> Looking good. Looking good. Get a nice uniform shade of grey there. Yeah? I mentioned I was using a 180 strip. Well, there we have it. Run. Easy as that. It's gone. That is now gone. I do have another one on the car. Shall we run through that one as well? That's a bigger one. Shall we run through it? Shall we run through it? Let's have a look. Show me this other one. Way. Other way. After you. He's a bit more obvious. 
Now that is your textbook run there, isn't it? That's your textbook run. Yeah. So again, a nice hard block. And because I'm using the non-Velcro side of this uh, bulletproof block, it is extra flat. It's, it's no not give, give no any give at all. So I'm just gonna have lots of confidence in the tool in the block and go for it. So you're just smoothing out that fine spot of the run yeah. into the flat of the panel. And you see your colour has gone all uniformly done, don't you? That is it. Run. She is gone. It's gone. And that's, you can see, I had a couple of little very shallow ones all over the car. Yeah. Um, but it's looking amazing, I have to say. It, 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 when the nice car goes all one colour again, it really does bring it together, yeah. doesn't it? So there we go. That is uh, how I get a run out of primer. I use a harsh paper and a hard block and... Knock it back. I mean, it's primer. It's, it's not paint. You don't have to worry about much at all, so just go for it. Next, we're, uh, you're halfway through um, prepping the panels for paint, aren't you? Yeah. Can so... you show us those panels? And here's one I prepared earlier. Yeah, very nice it is too. So you have sanded this down, have you? We've gone through the grades. So um, I like to, I like a really flat car. I like a really straight car. And this is the black, gloss black car. So any little wobble, dents, imperfections are gonna stand out like a sore thumb. So I always, I hit my primer with some 180. That's extremely harsh. But as long as you go down through the grades and you're confident that you've got the scratchy lines out from the last grit, then there's no problems. Mm -hmm. Just be gentle. So I've gone, I've hit this with 180, 240 and 320. So this is now ready for wet flat in with some 600 and then it's ready for paint. Obviously we're not going to sand every square inch and show you on camera so Lewis yeah. has done the panels, done the panels. we I will show you a bit of the run shell. through yeah. a whole panel our, our start to finish yeah. prep for paint technique which is this video basically yeah. um, so that was taking a little run out now I will see you for stage one Right guys, the rest of the car is at the 240 stage. Like I promised, we're gonna run through this quarter with you um, a little bit more slowly, uh, so you can see how I like to get things done. So, the first stage is obviously protect your swage line. So that tape, this edge, is directly on top of the swage line, so we don't lose it. And this is the last stage where we're gonna need the tape because we don't want the swage line too sharp. 
someone might cut their finger. I'm going to put some extraction on. Mainly, I'm going to be using this block. Uh, and, like I said, some fairly aggressive 180. Uh, this is the Merca Iridium. It's the stuff I quite like to use. So, the reason why we're going to be using some 180 is because it because of how aggressive it is. It's gonna cut it flat. It's not gonna leave any lows or highs. It's just gonna take no prisoners and knock it flat. So let's get it, let's get on it. Right, make sure you keep your block nice and flat. Let's see what this dust distracting. Again, keep your block nice and flat and work up to the edge of this tape not over it and you want to kind of go in slight diagonals but more forwards and backwards than anything else you can see how fast this 180 is cutting the primer it's taking absolutely no prisoners getting rid of all that orange peel Cutting dead flat. That is looking perfect. Lovely. So, let's come back to here. We need to redo our tape line next. And just follow this line pretty close, probably leaving a gap of about a millimetre or so, just to give you some sort of material to block away. Tape line up, let's um, block it exactly the same way. Keep your block nice and flat to the surface, nice diagonal strokes, and um, watch your low spots. Next up, we're going to tackle this area here. Same dealio, but we're going to be using uh, Dura blocks. These are really good blocks, nice and flexible, great for slightly curved panels. And we're going to be using the 240 instead of the 180 because this isn't a straight, a flat, flat bit of car, so it doesn't need the aggressive strokes of the two of the 180. Sorry, to um, to make it perfectly flat. So, We're going to be using a few different styles of um, the Dura Block to sort out all these little bits and pieces. The Dura Block kit is a very handy kit.
Right, we are done with the 180 stage. It's left us some, with some pretty good scratches to dig out. So we're going to swap out to some 240 and I'll give you a nice close up to show you how fast you can easily get rid of these 180 scratches with the 240. We don't need this anymore. Make sure we get rid of those little bits of tape that like to stick on the edge. Now if you watch, the 180 grain is going this way. And this is why I quite like using black primer. You can see what the what what you're doing, like getting trying to get rid of the deeper scratches without having to use any guide coat. If you go in the opposite direction, you can still see those 180. You keep working it and they just disappear as you're working them. Now you can see these grains going that way are the 240s and these grains are the 180s. It's pretty good. I swapped to using a Duroblock here because the, the panel curves off. So there's no need to be such a rigid block. It's much easier to sand it if the block can give and curve with the car you're working with. Right, we're done with the top section, so we're gonna get the bottom section done next. But I think you've seen enough of just plain old blocking, so I'll meet you when we come to do the arch. Right then guys, wheel arches. We've done all the 214 around here. It's very nice and flat. Lovely impact. So, wheel arches. Again, we're going to be using a Duroblock. These, it is a great kit, the Duroblocks. Have a look at them if you're interested in this sort of stuff. I do recommend them. They are very good. So, we're going to start on this flat here. We're going to be using this small Duroblock. It's very bendy. So it'll, it'll bend with the curve and quite simply just gonna go backwards and forwards like this, nice straight forward. Just keeping an eye on it, making sure there's no low spots anywhere. And also keeping an eye on this edge, not to overwork it and also trying to keep it cons consistent and smooth and nice. This, this line tends to just fade away about here. It's the same on the other side, and it was the same on the other Lotus something we had here, so I'm guessing that's how it's supposed to be. Bit of, a, bit of an odd thing for this car, really. A bit of an odd thing for all cars. Most of them have a wheel arch that stays crisp all the way around, but I guess it's part of this car's design. You can get there. Right, that's lovely. We're going to move on now to this little round Dura block. And again, we're using them because they curve, and this is a curvy part of the car. And we're just going to run it through the radius, rocking backwards and forwards, making sure we've got it nice and flat. Nothing major, just checking it over. There we go. That's nice. Now we've got to do this edge. We're going to use this long, thin, squarey kind of Dura block. I'm just going to hold it flat and go from one side to the other. Just keeping an eye on it. See how it's patchy in areas? That's telling us that we need to keep on flatting.
looking very nice indeed. So um, I think this panel is now ready for the next stage, which is the 320 stage. And um, then we'll be moving on to wet flatting. 320 stage guys, exactly the same as the other ones. Again, keep an eye on all the grains that you're making and getting rid of. It won't take you long just to make it nice and smooth. Just a one light to once over to get rid of those two 40 marks. And you're going to be done in no time. Always be careful of your swage line though. I try not to work at it too much in one place because it will move very easily. So there we have it. This section is now 320'd, ready and waiting for wet flatting, which will be in the next episode. So there you have it guys. That is how I dry block a panel. Um, we're all done basically here. Uh, next session will be wet flatting this car, so if you'd like to join us for that, tune in next time. Bye.